Hello everyone, I'm Chaz Gaming HD. I'm gonna be showing you guys the best Pokemon to catch in Pokemon Black and White 2. Unlike Black and White 1, which only had Pokemon that were well, created in the Unova region, Black and White 2 has Pokemon that are from earlier regions just like any other Pokemon game. If you look back at Pokemon Diamond, Pearl, or Platinum, they all have Pokemon from earlier regions. Black and White didn't have that, and well, many people didn't adore the Pokemon in the Unova region, so they went ahead and added in their big sequel, more Pokemon, more of a storyline, more to do, and all in general, a better game. But this isn't about the game, it's about the Pokemon. So we're gonna go ahead and start off with the starters. I'm gonna get a little more in depth with the starters, but I'll still have a nice description for every Pokemon I decide to pick. We're gonna go ahead and start off with Snivy, Servine, and Superior. Snivy has average defenses, but they're still higher than TP and Oshawott's. It has lots of speed, and its attack is a bit below average. Same with a special attack, but some suggested moves you might want to teach it are Leech Seed, Coil, Growth, Leaf Blade, Light Screen, Reflect, and Leaf Storm, which is a later game sort of move. Learn to the level 57. You can use these moves like Light Screen and Reflect, and even Coil to raise your defense a lot more, but Light Screen and Reflect to sort of take its speed as an advantage to set up moves before the Pokemon even gets to attack you sort of avoiding that bad situation where the Pokemon kills you in the first hit and you can't use it. Moving on to T-Pig. So unlike other games where they really lack fire types, this game they really did a good job in adding lots of fire types, and there are plenty of other fighting types to choose from and fire types, but T-Pig's a nice choice. So as it goes on to its evolved just chain, we have high HP, Surprisingly low defenses, but the high HP does make up for that, and it has bulky attack. And here are some suggestions for moves on T-Pig. Flame Charge, Arm Thrust, Rollout, Heat Crash, Flame Thrower, Head Smash, and Flare Blitz. Flare Blitz, like Leaf Storm, is a later game move, and will be only taught in later levels. Even later than Leaf Storm. Moving on to Oshawott. Oshawott mainly focuses on attack, but it also has slightly good special attack. It has average speed, and it's well-rounded in defense. Some suggested moves are Water Gun, Razor Shell, Water Pulse, Revenge, Aqua Tail, Slash, and Swords Dance. Swords Dance, just like Flare Blitz and Leaf Storm, are also late moves. Flare Blitz is taught at level 62, Swords Dance and Leaf Storm is taught at level 57. Sorry if I do seem a little stuttery, because these starters are really confusing and hard to explain. But the Pokemon aspect is a little more simpler, I won't go over all the suggested moves because there is actually quite a lot of Pokemon that I want to suggest. One Pokemon that you think you would never find on the list is actually Patrat. This thing is only good for the beginning of the game, and it's progressively gonna get bad as the game goes along. Now, why did I pick this thing, and why would anyone pick this thing? Because I'm pretty sure that anyone who saw this thing in black and white one at the first glance thought, hey, it's a pretty nice Pokemon. But then, as they learn, it's not as good as it looks, or as many people thought it would be. So this thing has Tackle, and it's good for Stab, which is same uh, same type attack bonus, which basically means if you have, in this example, a normal type, and he has a normal type move, it's gonna gang some power. Doesn't matter if it's physical or special. So it's good for the beginning of the game because it has that. It also learns Bite at a very early level. It's a very good early on Pokemon if you want to go ahead and take on maybe the first gym, but I really wouldn't recommend that. And plus, once again, I don't know how many times I'm going to say this in this video, Pokemon are really easy to train in this uh, game, so you can go ahead and switch it out for any other Pokemon you may want. But once again, I wouldn't use it as the game goes on. Moving on. Leave Annie. Go ahead and catch a Seawaddle pretty early on in the game, because Leave Annie is a very good bug type. Now, there are plenty of bug types to choose from, most commonly probably Wurmple, or Weedle, or Caterpie, but this is sort of a different bug type Pokemon that's not a worm. Well, excluding Burmy. So Lee Vanny has lots of attack and speed, and it's just all around a good bug type. And that's mainly why I put it on this list, because there's not that much good bug types that you'll find out. And unlike the other bug types in the game, this one doesn't evolve early. And usually, it is good if Pokemon evolves early, because its stats do gain from the evolution, but then again, it does progressively get a little worse, just like Patrath, but not as bad. It'll still be very good at the end of the game, mainly because of the moves it can learn. Unlike Patrath, it can't learn that much good moves. 
that will actually help it out, and it actually does learn some good moves, but once again, Patrat just doesn't have the stats to back it up. That's why it's only good in the beginning of the game. Leaf Vanny, on the other hand, is just a very good Bug-type Pokémon, a great filler for your team. It does learn a lot of Grass-type moves. It learns a few Grass-type moves, and um, maybe some TMs you might want to teach you as well. Moving on to Ampharos. That's right, you can find Ember Reap in this game at the Flockacy Ranch. It's in the beginning of the game, you can find it around level 5. I'm pretty sure the levels are either 5, 6, or 7, but this thing has great special attack, and has good special defense and lots of HP, and only one weakness. So this thing's a great starter to choose from in the beginning of the game. Obviously, I don't mean starter by starter Pokemon, you choose one of the three. I mean, it's a good Pokemon to get in the beginning of the game. These things aren't hard to find that much, but you won't be able to run into them every encounter. I'd say probably one in every six encounters. Not rare, but not common. Probably in the uncommon tire. This thing will not be spectacular in the beginning of the game, so which is actually why it's actually really recommended that you sit through all of the training and stuff, because this thing does not have an easy beginning of the game. It sort of shines in the mid to later game. Moving on to a Pokemon that you can also find in the Floxy Ranch that you are probably very surprised to see. Forget probably, you are really surprised to see this thing if you did not already know it was in the game. Ryalu. Ryalu. You can catch one of these things in the wild, unlike getting it from an egg in some kind of just weird cave from a trainer called Riley, and you have to go ahead and use your experience share and go up through all the weak training. In this game, you can actually raise it as one of your own team members. That's right, normally raising a Ryalu is actually possible. And if you evolve into Lucario by getting max happiness, which is also easy in this game, you'll be able to get a Lucario. And Lucario has excellent attack and special attack, and has good speed and average defensive stats. An all around really good Pokemon, it can learn some really nice moves and will be a great Pokemon for you to have in the game. Another Pokemon that you might see, which is also what many people will think is a good fire type to have, Growlithe. Now, I do like Growlithe, and I'm a huge fan of Arcanine, but there's one thing that I figured out. It doesn't have any, and I mean none. It doesn't have any physical fire-type moves until the end of the game, pretty much. So basically, this thing evolves with a Fire Stone, and as you know, any Pokemon that evolves with a Fire Stone can't learn moves after they evolve with any stone, for that matter. Not just a Fire Stone, any stone. You can't learn any moves once you evolve a Pokemon with a stone. And this thing only learns good, well, physical type moves at near the end of the game, during round level 40 or 43. And I don't know, I mean, I'm pretty patient with my Pokemon and stones, but I'm not gonna wait around level 40 and 43. That's basically the whole Simipor and Simisage and Simiseer story. Around level 40, it starts throwing the good moves, and that's a very patient wait. But again, as most patient waits in Pokemon, it does pay off. This thing can learn Outrage and Flare Blitz. But, I'm pretty sure people in this game were first playing it wouldn't really go through that too much. But still, if you're willing to get the weight, it's a good Pokemon, but if you're not that patient, then I wouldn't suggest this Pokemon at all. Moving on to Crobats. That's right, I said Crobat. And we all know Crobat comes from Golbat, which comes from the dreadful Zubats. Yes, Zubat, the Pokemon that you find in every cave, and you can't find any other Pokemon that you're supposed to find in that cave, because it's only filled with Zubats. I mean, people who played the Pokemon games in, as their childhood, they look at this thing, and it's just a weird bat with two antenna-looking things, no eyes, and you just hate it when you look at it. I mean, maybe some people just hate it because it's so common, but hey, if you look at the aspect of maybe finding legendaries too commonly, Maybe people wouldn't like legendaries. No one really knows that, some people have different thoughts. But all I'm saying is that Zubat is very good if you actually train this thing out. Now, instead of trading, which many people thought you had to evolve from trade, which maybe that's its previous, I'm not too sure on that. But it's max happiness to get from Golbat to Crobat. And when you get a Crobat, it is one of the best Pokemon in the game. Not just black and white too, I'm talking every game. Blue, yellow, red, all of them. Gold, silver, sapphire, ruby, emerald, diamond, pearl, platinum, heart, gold, soul, silver, gold, silver themselves, black and white, one, black and white, two, black and white, three, black and white, four. It's gonna be a good Pokemon. 
So this thing has good speed, good attack, and average defensive stats. Yeah, yeah, sounds kind of average, but this thing, there's not that much poison and flying types. If you look at that, there really aren't that much poison and flying types. I'm pretty sure this thing might be the only poison and flying type. And plus it does learn some good moves, including Venoshock. And that's a very good move to learn. I'm pretty sure you won't see too much flyer types come around with Venoshock. This thing's just a unique Pokemon, and it's very worth it. So moving on to Escadrill, or Escadrill, but I call it Escadrill. Now this thing comes from Jilber, and Jilber is actually hard to raise in black and white. Well, I wouldn't say hard to raise, but it's a lot easier in black and white too, just because of trainer battles, nothing too major. But once you get an Escadrill, this thing has monstrous attack, very good speed, surprisingly. It has a boatload of HP, and its defenses are decent, but I'd say they're around average. Don't get misled by decent. That's good for this thing. It's carrying great attack, and it's just an all-around good Pokemon if you wait it out and get this thing. You don't even have to wait that long. It evolves to level 30. Or around level 30, I'm pretty sure. So now moving on to an Eeveelution. Probably the only Eeveelution I'll suggest for this game. Espeon. Now, this thing is very fast, has very high special attack, and very good special defense. But there's only one problem. It doesn't learn anything else besides psychic type moves. Now that may not be true, but there's just not that much other moves it learns besides psychic type moves. So some good suggestions are probably teaching it the TM for Shadow Ball, which will really help in the aspect of its very high special attack. Now if you're not willing to teach it Shadow Ball, I probably just would skip out on this thing because besides the psychic type moves it learns, it's really a good Pokemon. but. If you just kind of take away the aspect of not that much vera, you know, variable moves, learns. I mean, it doesn't have a wide variety, but it's still a nice Pokemon to have. It has good stats. Moving on to probably one of the best Pokemon in the game, definitely up there in the top 10, Darmanitan. Darmanitan obviously has evolved from Darumaka, and some Darumakas have the ability Hustle, which lowers accuracy, but it strengthens physical type attacks. This thing has very high attack, good speed, and awesome HP. Defensive stats are average, but still, it's a very good Pokemon. Once again, probably the fire type I'd suggest in this game if you didn't get T-Pig, and if you're looking for a good fire type. You can get Darumaka pretty early in the game, I'm pretty sure it's sort of the same area as Black and White, and it's still a very good Pokemon to use. Once again, the strategy for Black and White 1 is skipping Berg, going to the next route, catching your Darumaka, bringing it back to Berg, and just annihilating the whole gym. And if that's possible in Black and White 2, I'd definitely recommend doing that because Darmanitan is a great Pokemon. Moving on to Roserade. Roserade, well, this is kind of where it brings it into bait, evolves with a Shiny Stone. Now, basically what this means, there's Shinchino in the game, or Chinchino, said that wrong. Chinchino and Roserade. Or Roselia in this case. So each of them have a Shiny Stone to evolve from, but there's only one problem. <clears throat> You can only get one shiny stone in this game, which means you're gonna have to pick one, Roselia or Chinchino. What you're gonna have, Minchino or a Roserade. Now, preferably, I'd choose Minchino. Just, it has good stats, it's a nice normal type that it can actually be dragged out throughout the game. Not much normal types will be surviving until the end of the game, maybe besides Stoutland, because that's a very good Pokemon. And that's another recommendation too, if you wanna go ahead and pick yourself up a Lillipup, that's a very good Pokemon, just a well-rounded, bulky Pokemon. However, it's just sort of, Minchino's just a, I, th I think I'd just rather pick it than Roserade. I mean, Roserade is a grass type, and there's not that much good grass types that people would say there are, which is actually why Roserade is just on the same level as me. I've used Minchino only once, but I've used Roserade twice. And I will say Roserade's a very good Pokemon, it has great special attack, it has nice special defense, lots of speed, and it's just a great Pokemon. It's also grass, so that's nice. Now moving on, Heracross. If you have a DS in it with black and white too, that's great. But if you only have white too, you're in for a surprise, because this thing is only be able to found fine. What? <laughs> it's only be it's only available in black too. So basically, I know, I can't even talk right now. But basically, it's in black too only. So go ahead and drop that DS with white 2 in it because, well, it's surprising me too, but I, luckily for me, I'm 
playing black instead of white. So basically, it has very high attack, but its special attack is lackluster. But it has good speed, and its move set is incredible. So definitely, this thing is a great Pokemon. I definitely recommend getting one of these things. And then sort of its counterpart, which many people think it is, Pinsir. This thing isn't even fighting type, but it learns a whole boatload of fighting type moves. That's lots of attack, great defenses, okay speed, and low special attack, just like Heracross. I'd say that Heracross is better out of the two, just mainly because the Heracross has more speed. All their stats are mainly the same, except for the speed aspect. Now moving on to Zorark. Now you get it from trade, which makes it level up faster. And it has high attack, special attack, and speed, but it is kind of vulnerable because the defenses aren't that great. Now, it does get handed to you free, but the reason it's traded, I think it was ends Zorark. So that's always interesting. Now basically, on Route 6, moving on to the game now, I'm pretty sure this list is based off uh, beginning game Pokemon to end game. Moving on. We have Sazbuck, Excavalier, Excelgore, Amoongus, and Castform. All these Pokemon are average except for Castform. I mean, many people thought in the games Ruby Sapphire and Emerald that Castform would be something special because it's given to you from the enemies that you just beat, but unfortunately, it's nothing special. Sazbuck is okay, Excavalier is pretty good, Excelgore is good, Amoongus is probably average. I mean, there's a rumor going around that if you put it back in its Pokeball, it gains one third of its health, which is always helpful. So, uh, yeah, basically, I mean, we haven't really talked about any Pokemon that, you know, have any of those special abilities in Pokeballs, because there's actually not that much. And speaking of Pokeballs, what is up with that thing on its head? I never got that. I was so excited to pick up an item until I found it in, you know, Amoongus, or its previous evolution, of course. But, here's Haxorus, totally on a different subject now. So, as we all know, Axu, Fracture, and Haxorus are also found in Black and White 1, but these things have immensely high attack. I mean, its attack is just great. I mean, you really can't- it's, it's probably tied up there with Darmanitan and Gigalith, and Gigalith has very high attack. I would recommend Gigalith, but you do need to trade, along with um, some other earlier Pokemon that I didn't really mention, Electivire and Magmortar. For Magmortar, you need the Magmarizer, and for Electrovire, I'm pretty sure you need the Electrizer, and you need to trade uh, through DS. Same thing with Gigalith, Gigalith, except you don't need a DS. So those are all trade Pokemon. If you have two DSs and you have those items, go ahead, those are great Pokemon. But besides that, if you only have one DS, then I wouldn't recommend getting them. So moving on now, Agron. This thing is completely maxed out in defense and special defense, and also has nice attack, and pretty nice special attack. I wouldn't say it's special, but it's average. And its speed is a little low. A lot low. No speed on this thing. But, there's one thing that you should know. This Pokemon, defensively wise, is just like... I'll give you a few hints. It's a turtle. Well, at least it looks like a turtle. It is a red shell. It's yellow, you already know where I'm going with this. Shuckle. Shuckle is maxed out in defense and special defense. I never thought I'd be seeing it either, but I figured this thing out. It's just like Agron. This thing is mainly for a staller more than anything, because its other stats are completely awful. But if you're looking for a nice stall Pokemon to set up, maybe throw it out and heal some other members, then go ahead and, go ahead and get a Shuckle, because this thing is actually a very good staller. But not a good offensively. Moving on to Chandler, this thing is a great fire type. It has incredible special attack, average speed, and average defenses. But I'm pretty sure its attack is nice too. So go ahead and teach this thing Fire Blast, because that thing will be through the roof. Moving on to Skarmory. This thing also has massive defense and only two weaknesses. That's why I'd definitely pick it over Unpheasant, which some people get Unpheasant mainly because they know they're going to be having the HM Fly and Unpheasant will back up the HM Fly with the stats. But then again, so will Skarmory, and Skarmory is way better than Unpheasant. I'm not even a huge fan of Pit of Tranquil or Unpheasant because, well, I thought they'd be a lot like Starly, and I'm a huge fan of Starly. I'm a huge fan of Staravia, and I'm a huge fan of Staraptor, 
but literally this thing just sucks. <laughs> Moving on now to Stormy. This thing is also found in the water. I don't know why I said also, this is probably the first Pokemon we talked about in the water. So this thing has a wide variety of attacking moves. It has good speed and good attack and it's pretty much well-rounded. And a well-rounded Pokemon plus good moves equals a good Pokemon. And then moving on to Tangrowth. Now this thing is just all around beefy Pokemon and it has decent speed. But that's why I recommend this thing. It's another grass type and it's a very beefy grass type. All around. So basically, that's almost all the Pokemon you can get, except for only two more that are literally just about at the end of the game. You have eight gym battles, and you're in that one cave. Victory Road. You go ahead and find yourself a Dino. Now, the whole story with Dino is this thing is a great Pokemon. It has okay stats as Dino, but then when you evolve it into Zwellius at a very late level, that is. It has pretty good stats, and that's mainly why if you- I think they did that because they already know that it's really hard to evolve into Hydreigon, because it evolves into Hydreigon in the 60s, mid-60s, mid to early 60s, or early to mid-60s. So, once again, Pokemon are easy to train in this game, but I don't think I'd take it that far. Basically, Zwellius is very good with its stats for that part in the game. I think that you'd have an okay time with Zwellius in the Elite Four. I think it'd be like any of all of your other Pokemon. But if you did get Hydreigon, that's when the thing really starts. You just go all over the place on these Elite Four members. I mean, if you want to go ahead and train up a Hydreigon before the Elite Four, you're going to be all set. You're, gonna, you're not going to have any problems. That's why I highly recommend trying to fight that urge not to do it and go ahead and evolve this thing, if you want to. And there's also Durant, which is that other late Pokemon. And Durant's a very good Pokemon, and it's really well-rounded stats. I think it's a very good Pokemon. It doesn't evolve, which is actually why it has good stats it does. It learns okay moves. It learns very good moves for that part of the game. And by that time, you should already have some nice HMs or TMs it can learn, so you go ahead and set that thing up pretty good. And that's it, guys, for this list. I may have skipped out on a few good Pokemon, including Absol. Absol's a very nice Dark type. Average Dark type. But, then again, if you do have any other Pokemon suggested, you can go ahead and just leave them in the comments down below. Um, thank you guys for watching this video on the best Pokemon in Black and White 2. And, have a nice day. I'd be loving to bring you guys more videos pretty soon. So, once again, thanks for watching.